So I know a lot of the things on our planet are controlled as far as information is concerned. Controlled by the law of attraction. What about like the news media and all this other stuff that's out of the vortex? Oh, they're just sucked into the law of attraction's magnetic pull. We'll be brief here and then we want to hear from you. We've been flowing blocks of thought to Esther and she's been trying to find perfect words for these blocks of thought because it's sort of a new frontier in the sense of finding words to describe it. So the law of attraction is everywhere, like an atmosphere, a pulsing, responsive atmosphere. And you all, us too, but you all are entering in, you can never enter out, you can never exit the sphere of it. But let's say you walk into a new room and when you walk in, you've walked into this atmosphere an atmosphere that always exists but each atmosphere you walk into each room you walk into is responding to the components of that so you all Esther's been trying to find a way she says it's like I'm a bag of marbles and you're a bag of marbles we're all a bag of metal marbles and the law of attraction is responding to the marbles the magnetic marbles so if something just happened and I'm really upset and I'm really mad at somebody and really feeling like a victim, that marble or those marbles, sometimes it's more than one, are really active in me when I walk into the room. And there's a thousand people in the room and some of them feel the same way. The law of attraction makes that your experience. So you leave the room and you say, everybody in that room feels just like I do because you only have access to what's a vibrational match to you. So this law of attraction atmosphere is responding to what you've been practicing, what you've got going, what's going on with you. So it looks like this particular thing is happening and it is, you're not wrong, but you got to understand why it's happening because the assumption that somebody else is gaining control is absolutely not what's happening. You're just using them as your excuse to not have your own control. Yes, I knew that would be the answer, actually. It's such a really tiring, boring answer. Esther has said to us, Abraham, if you say that to me one more time, why is it always about me? Why is it always about what I'm doing? Why can't you just for a minute say, they could be different? So we say, they could be different. They could be different. And then we say, and a lot of them are different, but you can't find them when you feel like that. Sure, sure. So my question is, with all this out there to look at, it really can grab our attention. So doesn't that interfere with, and this is what yeah. I was going to ask, does yes. that interfere with our free will of choice? It doesn't interfere with your free will. It interferes with your focus muscles. It's easier to observe than to think. That's why we teach meditation. It's easier to quiet your mind than to be looking at something and say, I think I'll look over there. Jesus said, turn the other cheek. But it's not an easy thing to do if there's a lot of momentum going. So if you're able to quiet your mind, you stop thought. When you stop thought, then you got a different bag of marbles. And when you stop thought, then things that you care about, that you want, you have better access to. Yes. So... As a point of clarification, the inner being to me now listening is the thing that's in the vortex, the larger part of us. Is that what the inner being is? Yeah. We want to tell you something about your inner being. So your inner being, what you were describing, some things you've been perceiving and realizing going on on your planet. So your inner being has complete awareness of all of that. The only difference between the physical part of you and not always, but the only part really worth mentioning here is that your inner being never pushes against any of them while you do. So you use them as your reason to not connect with your power, which makes you even better at them. There they are behaving like that. And here I am looking at them behaving like that. And here I am pushing against that behavior, which I do not like. As if I think I should get to decide what parts of the diversity stay and what parts of diversity go. And as I push against any part of it, I 
disconnect from my true power. And then I'm even more upset with them. Right. So I look at the things that we do want as though they're synchronicities. As if they're what? Synchronicities. A synchronicity where they're tied together, just like a chain kind of like. And it's kind Same of more. leading more. us. It's leading us to the thing we want by these little pieces. Well, the law of attraction is leading you to whatever's most active in your vibration. Esther finally decided she has a few different places that she can be. And all of them have a lot of televisions. All of them. She has a little apartment in California and there's three televisions in it. It's little. You could hear any of them from everywhere. But there are three televisions and Esther is thinking. She remembers some years ago, Jerry and Esther became very good friends with Burl Ives. Some of you know who he is. And he had a beautiful home on a ocean front and spent a lot of time in a little room with a big television. And he said, it's my window to the world. And Esther thought, yeah, that's what it is. She doesn't feel quite the same way about it now because it's a window into a whole lot of programming that is slanted toward those who push hard against things because that's always the biggest audience and why we talked about that earlier why do you push against things why is it easier to join some really strong unwanted thing than it is to start with something that you might be interested in that's got momentum and that feels like power it's compelling so what do you do here's what we would do you start by acknowledging I'm an extension of source energy and I'm here for all good reasons I'm here to live and to create and to expand just start with those easy to find matches and then say to yourself and I live in a very diverse environment just like I planned with lots to choose from because I want to figure out what I most like to eat and how I most like to feel and the things that I'm most interested in and so here it all is this big palette of choices and I get to make them now you all are in a position where you could start practicing that thought and accept it little kids can't really do that because they've got big people guiding their behavior and their direction and their attention more but you're past that and yeah you've got some old habits of catering to others we call it calibrating to humans we call it conditional love if I behave this way and I get a good response from you and there's a lot of you then I'll perform for you because your response to me feeds me in some way it does doesn't it but what we want you to remember is what's really feeding you is your source your inner being and you're being fed even while you're pinching it off you're still being fed even while you're pinching it off you're still being fed with this avalanche of well-being and clarity and love even though you may be pinching it off so then as you stand in your human beingness and you say okay I'm starting to get this I have a large perspective and the way I feel is my indication of how allowing or resistant I am to that perspective so that you decide that you're going to start calibrating more to what feels good and then you start noticing immediately the results of that calibration then that may be more compelling to you for a while Esther starts over every single day and every single day somebody misbehaves and she loses her way for a minute there's just a lot going on out there and you don't want to be oblivious to what's going on it's all right to say no to that because when you say no to that you're saying yes to something else but you've got to turn your attention to the yes part faster than ever before because the no part has a lot of momentum going and it will make you OCD there's a lot of momentum going there's a lot of momentum going so you have to really really care about how you feel and you know what we love you so much we love you so much you're not good at that you're not good at doing what makes you feel good you feel guilty when you feel good somebody will say what are you doing today and Esther will say I'm working really hard I'm really working hard I'm really I'm working really hard because she feels guilty that she spent the whole morning 
watching birds. <laughs> what you been doing? Nothing. Going down my list, checking things off, doing all the things I'm supposed to do. Good thing there's no cameras on her because she's following her bliss big time. She's coming to the place where she's doing what feels best to her. And she wants that for everybody up close to her and at a distance from her. She wants more people to do that. But most of you are very disciplined about doing what you're supposed to do rather than what feels good. Because most of you have forgotten, you've lost track of the leverage and power that comes with alignment. Get into alignment and then get into alignment and then get into alignment and then go do your work and find all the matches in the work that you're doing. So we're going to take segment of refreshment, but let's end on this note. Most humans are living conditional lives where if they see something that makes them feel good, then they support that. If they feel something that makes them feel bad, then they push hard against it. But when you say yes to wanted, you attract it. When you say no to unwanted, you attract that too. So unconditional living is rather than trying to think your way through it, try to feel your way through it and decide that feeling good is what matters most. When we come back, if it comes up, and we're sure that it will, because we get to pick you and we know what's on your mind, we'll talk about some of those easy matches, easy ways to tune into who you really are. You do not need to worry that people who are having a hard time are going to disrupt in any big way what's going on on this planet. Because the well-being is what is dominant. And you can look at this place and this place and this place and this place. And we're not calling out one religion. We're not calling out one political party. We're not calling out one philosophy. We're not calling out one person over another. We're saying your diversity is a good thing, but you do yourselves a disadvantage when you're saying it's your fault. Because when it's your fault, you're disallowing everything that you want and blaming that for sure it's a good time for a segment of refreshment if you like this video don't forget to subscribe we'll see you in the next